560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. So the greatest generation gave us the baby boomers, disaster. And then the baby boomers gave us Gen X, the Reagan generation, good news. But then Gen X didn't learn the lesson of the greatest generation, and they gave us millennials. Mm. Now, there's hope for Gen Z. I think there's hope with Gen Z, and not just the likes of Addison in Naperville 203 or uh, Sophie Corcoran across the pond in the U.K. You heard those videos, those yeah. statements and, earlier. And we tweeted them the out show. so you can yeah. watch them. Check them out. Please do. Uh, here's some hope from Gen Z as well, too. Listen to this uh, Gen Zer who posted to TikTok on taxation. Listen to this. I, I, I watched this, and I thought it was like watching a bird give first flight. No, I seriously think about this every single day, and I'm sorry if I sound stupid. If somebody has $500 and they've already paid taxes on it and they give it to me, so now just because it goes from them to me, I also have to pay taxes on it, even though they they just did. And then not only that, but anytime I spend one of those $500, I'm going to also pay another tax fee on whatever item I'm buying. And then whoever I bought the item from will have to pay taxes on the money they just earned from what I bought. So like, if a, so every single dollar, keep going. Like, you can get there. Come on. If a dollar is hundred cents, edge. hold on. Yeah. Oh my god, no, math no. is hard. Oh my god. You're oh in god. the ballpark. Just okay. you can do it. Forget it. Oh my god, just forget it. No, 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 not a valiger. Don't forget it. <laughs> You're you're on the right track, young lady. Keep going. Come keep on. going. Keep Come reading. On. Somebody get her a Econ 101 book. Um, Stat. Hurry up. Now, if somebody gives you five hundred dollars, oh. there is like an eleven thousand dollar. I think it's eleven thousand dollar gift tax gift exemption. Tax. Right. But I don't want to. You know, let's not go CPA on her. She's she's you know thinking <laughs> through this. It's very good. Um, so uh, so we have hope for Gen Z, yes. but but no hope for the millennials, or at least that's what our friend Professor Mark Bauerlein suggests in his new book, The Dumbest Generation Grows Up, From Stupefied Youth to Dangerous Adults. Uh, here's one excerpt from the book I particularly enjoyed. Their digital devices and video games and 500 TV channels and 300 photos in their pockets fed them diverting apps and stupid movies and crass music and stuck them with crushing student debt and frightful health care costs, a course in vulgar public square, churches in retreat, and an economy of creative destruction and disruptive innovation, which the top 10% exploited, but the rest experienced as precisely destructive and disruptive, all the while giving them little education in history, art, literature, philosophy, political theory, or comparative religion, a cultural framework that might have helped them manage the confusions. Thus, the dumbest generation grows up. Professor Mark Bauerlein is an English professor at Emory University. The book, again, The Dumbest Generation Grows Up, From Stupefied Youth to Dangerous Adults. Professor Bauerlein, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, Dan and Amy, I'm glad to join you. Uh, so we just keep making these uh, generational mistakes. Somebody's dropping the ball on the intergenerational compact here. Um, why are you so uh, skeptical or concerned, maybe is even a better word, about uh, these millennials who are growing up and going to, uh, you know, ride point on our lives in America in the not too distant future to the extent they're not already. It, it It's a serious problem. And what we're seeing now is uh, the fruit of what we let these 30 year olds do when they were teenagers back in the aughts, we handed them Facebook and Twitter and the iPhone and the video games, let them plunge into their screens. And a few of us said, no, 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 this is not healthy for them to send 4,000 text messages, messages a month. It's not healthy for them to have that phone right by the pillow so that if the, the photo of, of the, uh, of the cheerleader comes through at one in the morning, they wake up and, and they can do a little, a little gossip. This is bad. We are shielding them from the realities of history, of politics, of, of religion, all the important traditions in life. And it's going to be very bad when they get to be 30, 33 years old. And what has happened? Well, and, and all my colleagues, you know, all, all, the, all the intellectuals said, 
no, 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 don't knock the kids. No, no, don't be a Luddite. Don't be a reactionary. Get off my lawn. You don't want to be like that. I, I you know, I, I had colleagues who'd show up for, for class, 50-year-old professors, who suddenly that fall, they were sporting a ponytail and, and an earring. Never before, because they wanted to show they were hip. They were down with the kids. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm the stern elder. Well, that's our job. You, you mentioned the, the generational compact, Dan. Exactly right. It is our job to tell teenagers, hey, smarten up. You know, fly right. And it's okay if they resent that. And, and if they say, you don't know what's going on, fine. But there, there has to be a good interchange, and it's a critical interchange. Well, we didn't do that. The boomers, the, the, the older mentors, we didn't do that. We let them grow up surrounded by all these devices and one another, and here they are, 33 years old. And what are millennials like? Are they the wonderful generation who's leading America into the 21st century? They elected the first African-American president. They were so tolerant and progressive. Remember how they were praised to the skies. Well, now they're, they're anxious, they're depressed, suicide rates are up, job dissatisfaction is very high. And on social attitudes, they come off as the most mistrustful, intolerant, and vindictive generation. They have a vengeful attitude toward other people, and that's where we get the cancel culture. Right. And we, we've got to – and it's out of control. I mean, but, but are they dangerous, they will, and how are they dangerous? Well, they're are they a danger to themselves or to others? They're, they're a danger to everyone. I mean, look, when, when Donald Trump won in November 2016, look at how they responded. They went ape. You want to say, you know, are, were you so blind that you thought Barack Obama was going to be your president for the rest of your life or someone like him? This is politics. Things go up and down. This is reality. No, no, it's not fair. We're going to light fires and we're going to march. Uh, so that's dangerous. It is dangerous when you are willing to sign a petition with 2,000 other people to get one person fired for telling a dumb racial joke on, on, on Twitter. This is, this is not good. It is dangerous when they will join marches and start smashing windows mm -hmm. like they did um, when, when they start drifting toward Antifa and Black Lives Matter and all, all these utopian visions because – they lived in Utopia when they were 15. It was called the bedroom. They could go in there, shut the door, and get – they got the video game, the tablet, the, the, the latest iPhone. They got the music going. They got the TV going. They could open up to their friends and have this bubble world of pleasing gossip and games and pictures and everything else, and they grow grown up. And why can't the world be this way? Why can't everyone just be happy? Love is love. And – what does a utopian do when he's disappointed? He gets angry, and he has a very simple solution. The world will be the way it ought to be if we only get rid of the bad people. That's the danger. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems to me, too, and this is woven into your book, but it's, it's the libertinism, not libertarianism, libertinism of that generation as well. They're not uh, moored to anything. And uh, and and thus the concern right. that that Gen Z uh, will be different with all of these institutions fomenting that libertinism. I, I mean, it seems to me like the the hope we have at present is just the sort of natural rebellion of one generation against the next. I'm going to do everything opposite that my the previous generation did. That that seems to be our our yeah. our whole our hope for Gen Z. I I think you're exactly right. Damn, but that it's going to be a battle because, yeah, if you're 18 years old, you don't want to hear some 30-year-old social justice warrior scold telling you what to think, and you're a bad person. There will be that rebellion, but here's the problem. The, the woke revolution now controls so many institutions of advancement, the universities, the schools, the corporations. You know, the law schools, the top jobs, they are now exerting forms of filtering and surveillance so much that if, if you apply for a job, they're going to look back into your Twitter feed. Right. They're going to see any records that you have of you, of you doing a hate crime uh, uh, of some kind, 
And so that top 15% of Gen Z that wants to get ahead, they're ambitious, they work hard, they want to get into the pipeline, into the elite. They know I got to keep my head down. I can't do the wrong thing. I'm going to stay out of trouble, and I'm going to go along. I'm going to conform. That's, I think that's where the future battle over this generational rebellion is, is going to be. If they control so much of the avenues of success, uh, it, it's going to be very hard to be a 22-year-old. You want to go to med school or you, 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 want, to, you want to get that internship, and does that mean that you're going to – Hide all of your conservative opinion, or actually, that might common sense, because we ask them to to go along with so many lies. Yeah, today. there See, are so many lies of the woke, and they have to nod right. in agreement. See, see, to me, the whole thing, the whole construct, is is a big fraud. And a good uh, current example of this is this uh, guy, this uh, tech entrepreneur, billionaire, who's a Gen Xer. Uh, Chamath Palatapia, who is a uh, co-owner of the Golden State Warriors, who's gotten into gotten all kinds of heat for saying he doesn't care about the Uyghurs. He, he said more. He said, if you're asking me, do I care about a segment of class of people in another country, talking about Uyghurs and concentration camps, not until we can yeah. take care of ourselves will I prioritize them over us. We should take care of our own backyard. But the reality is he doesn't care about the Uyghurs uh, being persecuted in China, and he also doesn't care about the people – that are downtrodden in his own backyard. That's just performative. That statement. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's that, that. That is the exact word. It's performative. We you know. Uh, and and you want to say, are the rest of us just a bunch of chumps? I mean, is the American spirit so dead now? The spirit that said, "Hey, don't, don't tread on me. Don't tell me what to do." You know, the free thinking, the pioneering, the I'm on, I'm I'm on my own. Kind of, you know, that independent spirit, the self-reliance that Ralph Waldo Emerson talked about, Thoreau going to the woods, I live by myself. I'm not going to play by your rules. Where is that spirit today? Well, if, Everyone, you, have, well, if, you, if you have kids, you have to tell them the truth. Like There is no voter suppression. And you sit down with them and you have to explain it to them that this is a made-up crisis. And, and then, then they have it, to roll out during Martin Luther King, you know, day to make it, you know, more profound somehow. You know, the left was very wise in that they understood, you know, we can lose all these political battles at the top. You know, Ronald Reagan can, can get into office and, and be a shock. But if we control the schools, mm -hmm. if we control the mass entertainment that our kids are going to swallow up in their leisure time and then all the instruction they get in school time, you know, over the long run, we're going to win. I mean, these, these kids, they hear every day. One of the things we didn't give them, you talk about the libertinism. We didn't give them any country that they can be proud of. We told them this is a country to be ashamed of. All the crimes, the sins. I mean, they are talking when, – when, when Joe Biden in that speech – Starts talking in, in Atlanta, starts talk, talking about Jim Crow, Bull Connor, Jefferson Davis. All Democrats. This, this, this is the America that you are handing to people. What an awful thing it is to tell a 15 year old African American kid in class teaching the 1619 Project. You are saying what this country did to your ancestors raped them, whipped them, enslaved them, and Jim Crow denied them opportunity and this country is going to exploit you and injure you what a great message to give to a 15 year old coming into the world now one, one of the things is if you tell people you're in, you live in an awful country they're not going to be inclined to defend it they're not going to be inclined to believe in strong borders hey you want a revolution go to it there's yeah. nothing here worth preserving yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'd use the word wise to describe the left. I think conniving is a better word. But uh, but yeah, your point uh, is well yeah. taken. Uh, Mark ba Mark Bauerlein, he's a professor of English at Emory University, senior editor of First Things as well. The new book, which uh, it releases on February first, but you can 
order it now on Amazon, I'm sure. The dumbest generation grows up from stupefied youth to dangerous adults. Professor Bauerlein, thanks for joining us. Good luck with the book. Thank you. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Did you know color is vital to your health? I'm not talking about the color of the walls in your house or your clothes. I'm talking about the color of the food you eat. A colorful diet is a part of staying well because many nutrients are color. The antioxidant lycopene is the red pigment in tomatoes and pink grapefruit. Chlorophyll is excellent for balancing pH and cleansing the body. It's the green in kale, spinach, and broccoli. Eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables provides your body with diverse chemistry it needs to heal itself and stay well. Eat the peelings of things like apples and carrots. Balance of Nature is whole produce. It contains all the vital parts in balance. Color, taste, and smell keep you well. And that's what you get with Balance of Nature. Start your journey. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com. Get free shipping and get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code CHICAGO. If you're looking to purchase a new home or refinance your existing home, you need to call Team Hochberg, your trusted local lender. Sam, 30, first-time home buyer, called his dad, Pete, because his realtor's preferred lender wasn't responding to his calls, emails, and texts. Pete advised Sam to stop wasting his time with his realtor's preferred lender and recommended he call Team Hochberg, the only lender he trusted to help his youngest son secure the financing on his first home. Team Hochberg answered Sam's questions, responded quickly to all his texts, calls, and emails, and helped Sam secure the mortgage on his first home. Breaking news, you are purchasing the home, and you do not have to use your realtor's preferred lender to secure the financing on your new home. Team Hochberg has helped thousands of AM560 listeners like Sam secure financing on their new home, and they'd like to help you, but they can't help you if you don't call 855-56-DAVID or visit 56david.com. That number again, 855-563-2843 or visit 56david.com. Homeside Financial, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS 1124061. Traditions bring families together and enable them to reconnect. Traditions create a sense of comfort and belonging. In these changing times, Catholic Cemeteries upholds the sacred traditions of faith, freedom, and choice by providing a permanent place for families to come together. With options that reflect personal beliefs and values, you can ensure your legacy lives on. Visit CatholicCemeteriesChicago.org and give your family the gift of peace of mind. Schedule a free consultation with an advisor today. Sean Thompson here to tell you about an incredible cost-saving opportunity you should consider for your building, office, or facility. For 30 years, Boyd Electric has been a local 134 electrical contractor providing quality service and technology. I know the owner, Jim Boyd, and he is a great guy. They help businesses large and small recap the benefits of energy-efficient lighting products. Boyd Electric has retrofitted hotels, big box stores, hospitals, and car dealerships, and is a total solutions provider that can serve your needs anywhere in the country. With their No Capital Outlay Shared Saving Program, you get 100% financing with customer payments that are based upon an agreed share of realized energy savings. Once that balance is paid off, you own the equipment and retain the energy savings. Boyd Electric's programs designed specifically to make upgrading your lighting. AM 560, the answer. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. President Biden starting his second year in office today. And while he insists, we have made enormous progress. A new AP poll shows 56% of Americans disapprove of the job he's doing. Only about one in four want him to run for president again. Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik tells Fox. The reason why his agenda has been torpedoed this past week is because Democrats in his own party oppose his agenda, which has moved so far to the left. Last night, Democratic Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema voted against changing Senate rules to get around Republican opposition to election reform. So that is now stalled, which the president tweeted is profoundly disappointing. Russia says President Biden's only adding to the tension, again warning Vladimir Putin not to invade Ukraine the day after the president said... I think he will, but I think he'll pay a serious and dear price for it. The president also said it depends if it's a minor...